Hello and welcome back to the Bitcoin Bridge. Now, these are dark times. I'm not afraid to say it. All around us and uh, sometimes in Bitcoin as well. Things seem to be moving a little bit slow. You're looking at all of those other coin holders becoming mega rich. You're looking at the price charts. You shouldn't be, by the way. But say you are. You're looking at them and thinking, why am I not becoming a millionaire? Why are we not changing the world? Well, I think we needed a bit of an optimism injection, and I've uh, for not tonight's guest, I've suggested my favorite optimist, which is my friend and colleague at CoinGeek, Kurt Wackett Jr. He's going to give us a, a nice little ray of sunshine and tell us all the reasons why it's important to maintain our enthusiasm for Bitcoin BSV. Kurt, welcome to the Bitcoin Bridge. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be here, John. It's been a been a while. Looking forward to it. It has. We were just saying before that uh, I think you've been a guest on uh, four different shows that I've hosted now. So, uh, congratulations! You've got that record. <laughs> just send me send me an NFT trophy, please. <laughs> Yeah, I got to learn how to make NFT In fact, trophies. That's that's a good idea. Give NFTs to all the guests. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're at, that that's a plan. I'm going to note that down as soon as we're off. Well, like that is kind of the theme I want to talk to you about today because uh, I want to talk to you about maintaining optimism and maintaining enthusiasm because I think you are probably the most optimistic and enthusiastic person in Bitcoin. Would you call yourself that? I mean, I suppose I, I'm I'm here. I'm here in Bitcoin primarily because the technology excites me. Um, yep. Having been a Bitcoiner since 2012, like I understand the opportunity to earn money uh, by doing nothing with Bitcoin. But uh, the the exciting thing has always been how can we change the world? And to me, like that's that's just so much more interesting than how can I make myself rich? And maybe it's because I feel like I could make myself rich any other way too, if I needed to, I guess. But um, I don't know if, if you're not going to be a pirate and, and just, just do crazy stuff. You know, I, I want there to be stories written a hundred years or a hundred years from now where people say, Holy cow, those people were nuts and they were right. And they changed the world. And I don't know where else to, to do do anything more interesting than Bitcoin. So that's uh, that's why I stay optimistic. I always wanted to be part of some kind of movement. And I think Bitcoin came along many years after I gave up that hope. And then one day I realized, hey, this is <laughs> this is kind of that movement I was always looking for when I was young. Yeah, well, it is. I'm, so I, I love those kind of uh, historical-ish, historical fiction kind of movies where you get to see... Steve Jobs in college or or whatever, you know, any of these people who became great and you see what their lives are like and people are typically mundane or they come from a mundane place or a mundane family and then they just decide to be different and it's a journey, <laughs> you know, like the the issues that people go through are are not insignificant, but you look back on them and say, wow. Lee Iacocca changed the face of the auto industry forever, and here's why. And yeah, it's you don't get a lot of those opportunities. So we're we're very lucky, me me and you, John, to be working in Bitcoin and on the forefront of data sovereignty and and the the change of the entire culture of of money around the world. And we may not even see it at fruition, but we get to be the guys that plant and water the seed. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's good enough for me. However, I uh, I think that's that's one of the reasons uh, I I thought up this topic because you at the moment I think things are moving a little bit too slowly for a lot of people, and part of that part of that is the price. You know, we've seen the price of uh, many other digital assets or cryptos like BTC, ETH, uh, shoot up massively in the past few months, whereas uh, Bitcoin BSV has kind of stayed about the same. I'm totally okay with that, but a lot of people aren't because some people are in this to change the world and other people are here to, you know, pump their bags or have their bags pumped. So what what would you say to those people? Are they justified complaining about it? Um, I, 
frankly, I don't think anybody's justified to complain about anything. Uh, yeah. I think complainers complain, and that's just a worldview problem for them. <laughs> Uh, and the, the, there's almost never value created from complaining. You can complain in your head and then create a roadmap and solve that problem. Like that's a business opportunity the way I see it. But uh, I don't know. You, you look back at people who had the opportunity to invest in Apple computers in 1985 and didn't, you know, and you, you hear these stories. Oh, I could have bought Apple at a dollar a share. And like, I probably I get could it. Have. like that's cool. Well, right. You know, I mean, that's that's a lot of people. And and we, we can look back and say or Amazon or pick pick whatever, you know, company du jour is and and whatever. You can lament that you missed the rocket, but yeah. um, there's always another rocket. <laughs> and so we shouldn't expect to just be able to work a job. You know, hey, I'm I'm I work an office job and I bought some stock that changed my life and I retire like that's not it's not very typical. Uh, the people who do retire are the people that start businesses and build businesses and create value. So, you know, whatever, if you, if you want to be 65 years old and you got $2 million in the bank off of some investment, but you worked a job you hated your whole life. Like that's, that's just, I, I, I mean, it, it makes me cringe, frankly. <laughs> so when I look at the opportunity to build a business in Bitcoin, it's like, I would rather have residual income. I mean, imagine getting 50,000 micropayments a day to your wallet and that's your residual income forever because you solved a ton of business problems around the world. And that's really only possible on Bitcoin SV. I'm, I'm, I've looked into EOS and Solana and you know this Chili's chain just passed BSV today in market cap. And it's like, these things are, are tokens in a casino um, I know Craig says this all the time. They're bucket shop tokens. And I, I, mm. something about that phrasing just kind of grinds my gears. But but he's actually right. There's not, there's not anything actually going on there except for buy my token. The token is the product on these blockchains. And in BSV, the coin is is not the product. The, the purpose is not to pump the price of BSV. The purpose is to build value or solve a business problem and have Bitcoin create value and nobody else is thinking that way. And eventually that game stops. This is why we get these bear markets where everyone, you know, spends two years. So well, Bitcoin's dead and we're all gonna <laughs> like, they're all idiots again. And then the, the, the bull market cycle comes back and it's, well, it's a new paradigm and welcome to heaven again. But it's, it's all about absorption on their side and you can't absorb value forever. And if they think they can, then I would tell everybody, buy BTC and all quit your jobs, everyone at once. At the same time, if we all quit and we all just buy BTC, the price will go up forever. And that's a perfect economy, right? And if the answer is not yes, well, then you agree that it's important to create value. And we have the only blockchain that allows people to create value at a global scale. So I am very patient and I'm very shrewd and I believe we will win the long game and uh, it doesn't matter to me how much we're getting laughed at because the people doing the laughing are short-term thinkers. And I'm also very happy for them that they've made quite a bit of money on their ETH or Litecoin and, and everything else. So that's, uh, yeah, you know, whatever. You can, uh, I found you can argue as much as you want with someone who just made $2 million by buying some <laughs> random crypto token about how worthy their new wealth is. And uh, they generally just respond by saying, scoreboard. You, I have $2 million. Poor, John. You have 200 <laughs> Yeah. So it's, it's very hard yeah. to rebut that. And I, I really don't even know if we should because I, it, I do see it as a completely oh. different game. You, it's, For sure. It's a long game. I don't think anyone really should be in Bitcoin just to get rich or uh, tokens or anything like that. No, the, the revolution of Bitcoin is not a cloud-based savings account. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the white paper could have been a lot shorter if if the entire idea was savings account in the cloud. Uh, different different story. So, uh, and and again, I'm I'm happy for people. Like there there are some malicious people that like uh, to flaunt and be you know really generally unpleasant to to us big blockers. So them, you know, I, I'm not happy for them, <laughs> but the typical person, I mean, I, I 
I've known a lot of people now that have made life changing money by randomly investing in some junky thing. And I'm excited for them. Like, that's awesome. I'm really glad that Ethland token made 20,000 X gains for you. Like, that's great. Be happy. <laughs> like, that's, that's good stuff. So doesn't doesn't bug me. It is a little bit like uh, winning the lottery. Sure, you you hit the jackpot, mm-hmm. but do you know how to be rich? You know, there's there's something about becoming becoming rich by chance or not through your mm-hmm. own hard work or creation, just through luck, or being in yeah. the right place at the right time. That uh, you you don't really learn how to deal with being rich, and I think some people use their money poorly after that, especially I mean, if- lottery winners do. Yeah, I mean, if your if your wealth is not uh, the product of of proof of work, or if the wealth itself is not proof of work, then yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't know, you don't know what it's like to be on top of the mountain if you didn't climb it. So that's uh, yeah, it's a rough one. Well, and this is this is I'm expecting in the next year or so we're going to be watching the the flip side of this. That we're going to be watching the here's this guy who lost everything. He held onto his coin for some huge amount of gains and some huge amount of losses. And I mean, they do these news stories. It'll be somebody guy. from, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I've been that guy too. <laughs> like Bitcoin's a, a yo-yo game and, you know, getting, getting wrecked is, uh, is something that, you know, you, you get used to, but this is that adoption cycle. We don't know if anybody's right, frankly. I mean, none of these things are, I don't view anybody even as a competitor to BSV. Like we're the only people that are trying to build a long-term business tool and everybody else is like, Oh, I mentioned that Chili's coin just passed us in market cap and the damn thing launched like six weeks ago. (laughs) So it's like, Hey, you know, this is the new paradigm. We've created all this value and like, Oh, come on. You know, this is just, this is a hype site. This is what hype cycle bubbles look like. And you know, whatever, just make, make your exit. At least, you know, not all at once, but start making that exit slowly. If you're sitting on a big chunk of gains, start putting them in something more conservative while you got the chance. Because in a year from now, you're going to be kicking yourself that you didn't. Possibly. And as we know, some people will. Many people won't. Will. Yeah, I'm always I'm always like, just come back in two years and talk to me again then. There's a lot of people who are very yep. interested in, you know, BTC, ETH, cryptos now who probably won't be in six months' time, assuming it does crush again. And yeah, I I think given past experience, it probably will. But uh, I don't know. I don't make any many, predictions it, anymore because everything is... <laughs> every time I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh no, what now? What now? And then I open the news and I look at it. And I'm like... Dam- damage assessment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think where... Where I get demotivated is that, um, as you mentioned before, you know we're we're in it to change the world, and uh, that that's an even slower process than you know, getting going to the moon or getting a huge bag in the Bitcoin sense, sure. because uh, you know it takes a long time to change the world. It's been ten years now that um, Bitcoin's well, twelve years actually, but maybe yeah. eight or nine or ten since we joined. And yep. the world, uh, the world has not embraced our vision, mm-hmm. I mean, to say the least. Uh, definitely, yep. a lot more people have come around to it, but uh, I don't know if they have the right idea. Uh, I don't know if we're really getting through to anyone. Do you do you think we are actually reaching the normal people out there, or are we really just preaching to the choir? Um. <sighs> I mean, it's, it's a difficult one because I, I do see the growth and both the growth in numbers and the growth in caliber of person that has joined the BSV economy over the last two years. And we were a very small group at first. It was it was not not super hopeful <laughs> when we first started. And, you know, people will point out like, wow, we've underperformed this bull market. But I mean, I can think of hundreds of people who have joined that with just great ideas, they've left Ethereum or they've left other things. I, I interviewed David Case the other day and this yeah. crypto fights thing, he's been working on for two years, long hours, long days. And he has this vision of this game. And we got to see a live demo on my show, the, the CoinGeek weekly live stream. <laughs> and um, 
it was it was great. And I'm looking at this game and saying, well, this is this is absolutely world class quality turn based gaming, which is a massive industry. And this monetizes it. It monetizes every move. You turn all your tools into NFTs. You, I mean, I, I told him, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to use a battle axe in this game and I'm going to, I'm going to put it in my will for Ronan someday. <laughs> and he laughed and it's like, but it's true. Like we're, we're changing the face of many, many things and they've been slow, but it's because we need to prove the value. And we started with a very small crew and we started with no tooling. Also the, the first person that came in with, uh, some good tooling ideas was Unwriter. So here, I'm going to build you sure. these various APIs that you can use to, to build on top of. And then he got some com- competition and some other people that were cooperating with him. And now there's a bunch of SDKs. There's all kinds of stuff that people can use to develop their new ideas. But even now, it's not nearly as robust as Ethereum's tooling. And we just need to continue to do that work. But as people leave Ethereum or as they... Uh, do actual fundamental research into why they need a blockchain in the first place. If they look at the actual metrics and if they actually need transactions and, and ownership and tokens that are, are, you know, capable of being sent for uh, a fee that's reasonable, we're the only game in town. So a, a lot of this is a waiting game, but a lot of it has been a lot of very quiet, but very hard, hard work uh, building out this tooling and infrastructure. And I, I, I make a comparison to Google and Yahoo. Uh, Yahoo didn't think they could lose. They had yeah. search in the bag. They had a whole corner of the web that was all Yahoo powered. Uh, and they didn't work on their algorithms. They didn't work on their search algorithms. They didn't work on on growing their product offering. And Google came out, it was a silly name and a silly brand. And, you know, these kids that don't understand the internet. They managed to be sillier they, than Yahoo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And what they did is, is they continued to grow their product offering, but they worked really hard on, on their tooling, on just getting better and better and better and better mm-hmm. against this behemoth that how could you ever get beyond the, the Lindy effect of Yahoo? Well, all of a sudden they just did. And it's because they just kept focusing on building an increasingly better product until they were 10 times or 20 times better than Yahoo. And then Yahoo had to take a step back and say, ah, shoot. We haven't done any research and development in a decade. And now and now we can't. We have lost the tech battle. And now this new generation of customers comes in and they say, well, I'll just Google it. And that's the game we're playing. We are playing the game of we're not going to get the BTC people or, or, you know, these people that are died in the wool in their own communities. But it doesn't matter because there's like six billion people on this planet that have no idea what a blockchain is. And in five years when they come to it and say, hey, I guess I should build something on a blockchain, we're going to be the only one that's been doing the really hard work to build that infrastructure out. And it's just a different game. Uh, and frankly, we're a different breed. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud to be part of it. I'm proud to represent it in, in the, you know, the, the corners of the world that I do. But I mean, it's, it, it's all excitement. I'm not even, I'm not hopeful. I'm excited. And that's just, that's the truth. You know, Kurt, that was some quality optimism. And I know it's genuine, too. <laughs> that, that makes it even better. It was the real thing. It wasn't fake. It wasn't acted. That was, that was real yeah. enthusiasm. And I'm a terrible a solid actor. Solid foundation. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I've always noticed about you is you're, uh, you're always present. There, I, uh, you, I, I will admit there are times when I don't want to talk about Bitcoin. You know, I, I just, uh, I'd like to go out for a walk and not think about Bitcoin. You know, I just, uh, I'll shut down Twitter for a while and not read it. I know that's pretty hard given our job is <laughs> working full time, yeah. reading the Bitcoin news and you know, uh, creating the Bitcoin news, creating stories about the yeah. Bitcoin news, that kind of thing. So, but you, you always seem to be there. Like uh, you're always on every social media platform if I send you a message, you respond within about 30 seconds, no matter what time of day or night it is, no matter what platform I'm, you're using. So yeah. how, do you, how do you stay so connected all the time without going crazy? Um, well, I might be crazy, so that's part mm. of it. Uh, <laughs> there is that possibility. I, yeah. it's, it's just fun. I, for me, it's, it's, it's a passion. I, I couldn't do this job if I didn't love Bitcoin. 
it, it, I'm, I'm really bad at advocating for something that I don't care about. And I really mean it when I say I'm not, I'm not a good actor. I'm, I'm really not. So uh, I, I believe it or not, I do take time. I, I go to the gym every night. Uh, I practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's, it's my other life passion. Um, I like to fight. And I think part of that keeps me sane too, to get the, the weird frequency debate of Bitcoin out of my head for a good hour or so every night. Uh, you know, it's very different when somebody's trying to, you know, tear my limbs off or strangle me or, you know, throw me on the mat so hard that I die. Uh, that's, um, good way to stay normal. <laughs> and then, um, you know, and okay, I, I take time, that's, that's I, I, I'm blessed solution. to, <laughs> I'm, I'm blessed to work from home too. Like I have a, I have a year and a half old son. Uh, I have a wife that I love dearly. She's great. She's my best friend. And, um, I take breaks during the day. Like, well, I'll do my morning stuff. We have lunch together. We sit and talk. Uh, she'll tell you I'm on my phone too much. So that's, you know, that's also part of a reality, but uh, I just love it. And I really, I think of, I mean, even you as an individual, but I think of the Bitcoin community as friends too. I, I enjoy talking to you guys. You guys are are my allies and you're my friends and you're kind of the only people that can understand my weird obsession with Bitcoin too. So uh, it just, it excites me. So, I, you know, I, I can't expect everybody else to be the same way, but but that's why. Why, why am I connected? Because I love it, but I'm also having fun. If Bitcoin stops being fun, I will probably disappear unceremoniously <laughs> around the time when it ceases to be fun. But for now, uh, you got me. One of the things I like most about BSV is that it is probably more fun than others. At least the most fun you can have sitting around in your house reading it all on Twitter anyway. <laughs> I sure. I do miss the in-person events. You, are, I'm not the most social person in the world, but uh, I do like the occasional conference or meetup or a drinking mm-hmm. session or something. And uh, I think the lack of that over the past year has probably dampened people's enthusiasm a little bit. Yeah, it has. I, I've been a meetup host for probably four years now, three or four. Um, and I used to go to the old Bitcoin meetups before, you know, the big blockers split from the small blockers and stuff too. And I, I, I always really liked that too. Uh, so that is a big, um, big hole in my social life for sure. But, um, I do like, however, I mean, we've switched to doing a lot of them via zoom and things and I, I don't dislike them and in many ways they're, they're more productive because people can have the floor if they want it. And, you know, the talks can be a little more pointed, whereas, in person with 50 people in the room. I mean, you can only kind of talk in your little bubble of three or four at a time and unless there's a presentation, but I don't know. I it's, I think all this pandemic culture has made everyone reevaluate everything. Uh, life has gotten really weird for, for everybody. It has. So yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do though. I mean, if it requires us getting on a, a video call to socialize, then you know, we, we do the best. Like some, some people live their lives on ships or live their lives as farmers in the field. And maybe that wasn't the best for their mental health or for, you know, for socializing, but it's like, you know, you don't really get to pick the life you live, but you, you make the best of what you got. There have been a few times I confess in the past year where I've thought, I wouldn't mind going out and being a farmer in the field or uh, on a ship out yep. in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Sure. I mean, I, I think the thing that people need to realize is that it, it will change again. Like mm. the, the paradigm doesn't just shift forever. Like the world will be different. Uh, but at some point, this pandemic will just be gone. Um, and we'll go back to living some other version of normal. I mean, if this is, three years from now or whatever, like it sucks. It's, it sucks to think about how long things are going to be lockdown schedules and, you know, COVID passports and all of this crap. But Hmm. I mean, we've lived through worse as a species. We're still here somehow, you know, we didn't all get eaten by saber tooth cats 20,000 years ago. So uh, I think we can survive um, a virus and weird government policies and, all of that. I mean, we're, we're a resilient species. So if, if we deserve to survive, we will. And I'm, I'm optimistic about that too. 
maybe one advantage of having lived through the early 1980s is that uh, I can remember when everyone thought there was going to be a nuclear war next week. There was, sure. there was a good couple of years where uh, people were actually terrified of that. And uh, yeah. where, where I came from, it was more a matter of like how many of them are going to hit us down here. And <laughs> <laughs> right. The fallout wins. <laughs> yeah. No, that was pretty yeah. much how it's going to happen. But uh, for a lot of people, you know, it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. And yeah, it's it's easy to forget that now. If you're watching 80s music on YouTube, it seems very optimistic. There doesn't seem anything dark about it. Yeah. But yeah, we have been through dark times before and suddenly they just, they melted away. Right. Well, and, and it's what it is. I mean, our, our grandparents, I think about my grandparents talking about the depression and it mm. was for many people almost a decade of, Hey, we're having potatoes and water tonight again, and that's the best we can do. And you know that that really sucks, and that really affected that whole generation, and it affected generations after it too, based on the experience. But again, we're still here. I don't, I don't hate my life. I'm happy to see my kid grow up. I don't know what the world's going to look like for him, but um, he could have a lot of hard years, and he could have a lot of great years, and that's that's just reality. We don't. Uh, we don't live in utopia and uh, there's a lot of bad things and bad people and, and all of that. But I mean, you, you make the decisions that you make to, to move forward. And uh, I think a lot of it is your view about things too. Like there are people that'll sing songs in prison all day and there's people that live in, you know, penthouse life and they overdose on pills because they suffer from depression. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is, but uh a little bit of hard work and, and some excitement about what you've got coming in the future. Uh, not a, not a bad recipe in my experience. I feel more optimistic and motivated now than I did a couple of hours ago. And I want to thank you for that. <laughs> uh, what I, what I'm wondering now is that can I get like a virtual version of you that I can just sit on my shelf or have on my screen or something that I can just like push a button and it gives me some of those quotes every time I'm, we should have, I'm needing we should have coin geek make some cardboard cutouts of me like smiling and speaking yeah. superlatives <laughs> actually we don't really be need okay, that because uh, you're you're everywhere on twitter and twitch so we can uh, that's true just hit refresh and there you are <laughs> with some with some more optimism <laughs> i i am very funny. impressed by that i say uh, i say all of this with the greatest admiration and wish, wish i could just get some of it to rub off sometimes and i think we've we've managed oh. to rub a bit off tonight too with some good I, advice. I, I sure hope so. Well, you know, I'm a fan of yours too, John. Uh, I've, I've consumed your content for years and years through all kinds of hash wars and UTXO splits and all this stuff. And I'm terrified you know, you, to you've read been a, that myself. <laughs> I, you know what? You, you, you do a good job. You're a talented broadcaster. I enjoy your shows. I enjoy your guests. I, I think you bring out, uh, you bring out a lot of good things in people yourself. So uh, I've always been honored to be on your show. I've, I mean, I could say no to all the other appearance, appearances that I've done with you, too. I I enjoy your, your content, I enjoy your company, and I enjoy your friendship, John. And so, uh, yours, too, too. Thank, you. thank you very much. <laughs> all right, before this, before this becomes a big love-in, uh, I'm going to get back on topic because we've only got a couple of minutes left. <laughs> and uh, sure. I'm going to ask you a very stock question. What are the best things you've seen on BSV lately? Oh man. Um, it's hard because I'm actually privy to some private things, uh, as a person who, uh, people like to show stuff to that's, you know, secret coming soon. That's uh, always the risk, isn't it? When you're a reporter, you, uh, you wouldn't deliberately reveal anyone's information, but uh, you don't want it to just slip out in casual conversation. Yeah. That's why I pretty much. So <laughs> that's wise. So, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, I'm excited about the stuff that Haste is doing. Mm. Uh, the, the Haste game itself, uh, I think the guys there are, first of all, they're fun. Um, the app is super basic, but they even say, like, Haste sucks, but it's proof of concept for what we're doing next. Um, so I think uh, Hand Cash Connect and what that enables uh, is going to create all kinds of really fun gamification stuff. Uh, I think some of it a year from now, you're going to look back and be like, wow, I just couldn't even believe that was what was being worked on. Cause it's awesome. Uh, and then same with relay X, uh, Jack Lou is another guy who, uh, I consider a, a friend and, and somebody who I respect, uh, 
this token explosion that he's he's pushing uh, almost singularly, I, I think is really cool too. Uh, but there's big stuff coming from uh, some of the players that we've sort of vaguely heard about for a while, uh, like Fabric, for example. Yeah, uh, Fabric pushed out these simple Fabric tokens on Money Button, but that's just a a first concept too. And they're working on some cool stuff on their end. And I think a lot of that is going to turn uh, BSV into a really interesting competitor for Ethereum on stuff just like DeFi and shitcoin trading generally. I, I think we'll end up. Uh, coming our way, and we'll get to benefit from some of that weird uh, transaction volume. But uh, I think we also things like will it it'll come. I mean, Ethereum can't handle it, so people will get frustrated and they'll look elsewhere. So mm-hmm. that's just how it is. Uh, but I think a lot of the things that um, I'm personally excited, I, I really want to play crypto fights, and I think that the game is going to be a blast. And they're connected with. Uh, Unicorn now, which is a giant uh, betting platform that allows you to take very weird, spicy bets on all kinds of different aspects of the game. And I, I think we're going to see a, a giant esports revolution on uh, on Bitcoin SV too. So there's just there's a lot of different directions. There is that sort of boring suits and enterprise stuff, which does take time. But mm-hmm. there's also this all these BS games and just playing stupid stuff with your friends and sharing it on Twitch and you're buying weird Twitch hat NFTs. Like we get to play all these goofy games too. And I think people will eventually realize that, Hey, you know what? Bitcoin SV is a lot bigger than, you know, just Craig or whatever people want to uh, meme as, you know, this is what BSV is like. It's, it's a bunch of fun people working hard and making cool stuff. And that just wins eventually. Like if we just keep making cool stuff and having a good attitude about it, and we innovate and we disrupt in real real places, we just win. And I'm frankly, I'm excited about dozens of things. I, I could send you a, a spreadsheet later. <laughs> Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I personally think there are plenty of reasons to be optimistic. It's just nice to hear someone else say them every now and then, just, just to refresh yeah. the memory. Because it's mm-hmm. too easy to forget things when, when you are stuck in your own little room and in your own little world. Um, you you do forget that there are other things happening out there. So it's, yeah. For sure. Thank you for reminding us and uh, thank you for being there on Twitter to remind us every day. Uh, I know it's right at the end and anyone who's still watching by now probably knows very well who you are. But just to wrap it up, yeah. uh, tell us where you are, like all the places you are. Uh. I mean, read my articles at coingeek.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to write things that are thought provoking and surprising. Uh, I don't think of myself as a journalist. I think of myself as a thinker. So uh, if you're just tired of reading about the news, um, you know, please read my articles. I, I try to make them fun and funny and I hide little Easter eggs in them and stuff too. So I Absolutely. appreciate the readership. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then uh, the live stream. I'm really excited about the CoinGeek live stream. Uh, we've been doing them once a week on Tuesdays at, at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we have guests. Sometimes we don't have guests. I do live Q&A. Uh, I will answer questions about other stuff, too, if you want to bring up. Uh, my, my line is, if you have questions, comments, blessings, cursings, grapes, gripes, or gropes, I will take all of them and, and respond to them duly. So impressive. Uh, please. <laughs> you know, the, the viewer can control the show. Uh, so yeah, so I, I would love that. And then, um, got some other cool stuff coming up with coin geek too. I'm really excited about, um, some of the coin geek stuff coming up. So just, you know, stay tuned, stay engaged, stay passionate, stay patient, please. Uh, but you know, if you can't be patient, then that's a good sign that you should go build something cool with your lack of patience. <laughs> so I think there's, there's really no I'm excuse. I'm, I'm feigning boredom here, but it's not really the reality. I think there's plenty to do in VSV. There's plenty sure of reasons is. to be excited. Plenty of distractions. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Well, thank you for that ray of sunshine, Kurt. And uh, you are, you're as always, most welcome to come on this show and any other. And uh, I'd really love to have a longer talk to you sometime. Again. For sure. I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, John. I'm really grateful uh, to be on. I'm excited about the Bitcoin bridge and I, I hope people... Uh, Let's get 50 people to buy it on Streamanity. Let's uh, let's pump it. 
Got to, yeah. got to pump those numbers up. <laughs> Target 50. All right. Thanks. Good.